man-made confluence of the air and cold navigation linking the Don navigation and the Ouse and Humber in Yorkshire. At the height of the South Yorkshire pottery industry from the 1700s to the 1890s, these man-made waterways transported the precious cargo of world-famous Rockingham, Kilnhurst and Mexborough potteries along these waterways. The divergent rivers are still difficult to navigate and experienced sailors know their dangers. The landscape now has a melancholy image of its past with battered fencing, rusty cranes triumphed by buddleias, rose bay, willow herb, meadow grass and thistle. The sounds of redundant metal wavering in the weather fronts and the horizon crossing the flatlands are an inspiration for a collaborative art project which aims to investigate its geography, moments of industrial past and to note the wave of contemporary globalisation which has led to the next environmental phase as nature reclaims its waterway and flatlands. Interwater is a collaborative project bringing together four artists who have developed new work without boundaries that will explore the Humber environment and its history within the context of change. The artists aim to create a fresh history and a fresh experience of the post-industrial landscape with this new collaboration mixing sound, drawing, clay and poetry. Adele Howitt is a ceramic and public artist based in East Yorkshire her ongoing research manifests as a series of large and small ceramic sculptures, intricate, seemingly delicate, focused on microscopic pollen grains and a new understanding of the value of a wild and living landscape. This is coupled with her rediscovery of pottery skills while researching the Mexborough and Dern Valley potteries. It was Adele who initiated the collaboration to celebrate 10 years of Studio 11, her gallery and studio in Hull. I initiated this project to celebrate 10 years of Studio 11 Gallery and Workshop, uh, which responded to a post-industrial site within the fruit market in Hull. And as a result of that, we grew a arts community, uh, collaborated with lots of different artists, met loads of different artists as well, and managed to remain after the City of Culture. So I thought it was worth celebrating, so I invited um, three other artists to do a specialist project where we would look at the wider Humber region and make a response that was collaborative and hopefully without any boundaries, any creative boundaries. So I was interested in, in combining sound with ceramics and clay, having a visual representation of that and also having words that would incite or at least describe the area and the kind of vastness and the openness and also the stillness of the area around Ghoul and the Humber region. So I'm really concerned in the way that the nature is trying, always trying to claim it back and it looks fairly wild but of course it's managed. So I'm interested in recording some of the, uh, the reeds, the water reeds, the willow herb, um, the nature around it. Well, I'm, I'm looking particularly at the Don pottery and the South Yorkshire potteries and looking at the style um, of the very ornate vases and plates and decorative items that they used to make. And I'm looking at how they were made, so using traditional pottery techniques such as uh, slab building, throw-in, uh, coil building, press moulding, using sprigs and incorporating that but using wild planting. So I'm, I'm looking at the way that the, the landscape is now and then recording that onto a traditional vessel. Y1 is an artist, musician and producer who has released music for major and independent labels internationally for over 20 years. Y's practice explores new compositional approaches to creating sound which explores familiar sentiments found within unfamiliar settings with a view to creating an imagined sense of nostalgia. So I'm using a mixture of uh, fuel recordings and uh, prepared sound. So I'm actually capturing sounds on location and um, finding sort of hidden sounds which will hopefully sort of evoke the, the sort of echoes of, of industry or activity that existed. Um, I'm also using hydrophones as well to, to capture the sort of activity in, 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 uh, in the water. But I think what I find quite interesting with hydrophones and um, the sounds that we have picked up in the waters is that it's a, it's a nice sort of juxtaposition between the sort of stillness of some of the sites and this activity and movement that's, that's occurring in, in the water. I, what I begin with is, is um, by gathering all these sound materials um, 
I'd use, a, I suppose, some of the techniques are a mixture of quite traditional music concrete compositional techniques uh, with use of sort of granular synthesis and through like a modular synth um, rig. You know, I've, I've received readings from uh, poet uh, Nick Allen um, and sort of tried to respond to some of the narrative that he's, he's observed and I think it, it uh, complements it quite well in, in that respect. And, uh, and also looking at um, the, the, the work of Miles and Nadell as well. And I, I think it's finding a, a way to sort of present these different mediums and um, trying to find a way of transporting that notion of nostalgia into the gallery space. Nick Allen is a poet whose work looks at the world afresh and hands it to us without judgment, like we're seeing it for the very first time. His poetry has a strange, dreamlike, yet concise quality, curious, yet knowing. It's not your traditional place to do landscape painting or landscape poetry. A lot of my poetry is around the mountains, the Lake District, Yorkshire Dales, bits and pla you know, places like that. Um, this, this causes you to focus on something else. It causes you to look in a different way at the landscape around you. The most important thing for me in terms of writing poetry is that it's somewhere I have to have been or somewhere I have to have spent some time, get to know the place a bit, get the feel of a place. The development of the project is really, I was looking down at the end of the Humber, Sperm Point and all that lot, uh, Sunk Island, there's some beautiful strange places down there. And we were just working backwards, coming back up the Humber and ended up in Ghoul, and here it is, and it's wonderful. In, in this round, in this environment, in the, in the exhibition, in the gallery, um, I, I, half of it is I'm, I'm looking forward to the surprise, but also I think um, it helps, it'll help give people a commentary on what's going on. They'll get a sort of narration or a story, if you like, that hopefully will link some of the pieces together. It probably won't unify everything, um, but it'll help plant some seeds in their mind about what it is they're looking at and what we're trying to get across. Painter Mars Lindley lives in York, within easy reach of the waterways, the wolds and the Holderness coast. His paintings are mostly landscapes, seascapes and street scenes. He concentrates on light, shade, movement and stillness to try and create dramatic, brooding images. I think in this particular environment, I like the, the idea that it's a very forgotten place. And it's also a landscape that it's um, almost impossible from sort of this uh, very flat landscape where it's, it's almost impossible to get a clear sense of the landscape around you. And the industry is integral to the, um, to the environment. And also it's a very, it's a very quiet place with a, with a sense of drama to me and there's a lot of uh, the rivers and the lanes and the uh, industry. Um, you always feel that there's a, um, a, a bigger world around you or just around the corner. It, the flatness of the, of the t topography is a, is a little bit of a challenge but also it's something that does definitely appeals to me. So I think again because it's something that's, it's the things that maybe aren't seen that uh, perhaps create the drama in the images. I'd say that uh, working together with uh, the other artists has been uh, a very interesting experience for me and I think as much as anything else it's allowed me to feel that um, I can spend time with other people and because it, it is uh, being, a, being working in this practice is a very solitary pursuit so for me it's worked very well uh, working together with Nick because we're, we're very old friends and we've often shared a lot of sort of done a lot of things together you know, what's bands together and cinema and Corries, that kind of thing, and so to actually finally, after all these years, to be working together has been a real pleasure. Bringing together the potentially disparate elements of the show is the final challenge for the artists, with the idea of creating a fresh history and a fresh experience of the post-industrial landscape with this new collaboration mixing sound, drawing, clay and poetry. <laughs>